President Biden addressed Congress and the nation in tonight's State of the Union speech. He discussed many of the issues concerning Americans, including the economy, foreign wars, and the migrant crisis. CBS correspondent Natalie Brand reports from Capitol Hill. Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States. Before Congress and the American public, President Biden delivered his final State of the Union address ahead of November's presidential election. What makes our moment rare is the freedom and democracy are under attack at both at home and overseas. While the State of the Union is an official speech, the president touched on key election year issues, including abortion. If you, the American people, send me a Congress that supports the right to choose, I promise you, I'll restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land again. On the economy, the president touted job growth. America's comeback is building the future of American possibilities, building an economy from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down. And called on Congress to cap out-of-pocket drug costs at $2,000 a year for Americans with private health insurance. Americans pay more for prescription drugs than anywhere in the world. It's wrong, and I'm ending it. As Republican lawmakers in Congress accused the administration of failing on the border, the president called for a bipartisan solution. Get this bill done. We need to act now. The president also unveiled plans for a temporary aid port on Gaza's coast to ease the growing humanitarian crisis as ceasefire talks in the war between Israel and Hamas stall. Outside, pro-Palestinian demonstrators gathered near the capital. Families of Israeli Americans held hostage in Gaza were among those invited as special guests by lawmakers, as well as Ukrainian Americans, as foreign aid continues to be held up in the U.S. House. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Alabama Senator Katie Britt delivered the Republican response tonight. She was critical of the president on both domestic issues and foreign policy. Right now, our commander-in-chief is not in command. The free world deserves better than a dithering and diminished leader. America deserves leaders who recognize that secure borders, stable prices, safe streets, and a strong defense are actually the cornerstones of a great nation. Britt did not mention former President Trump by name. He continues to inch closer to the GOP nomination.